2004, I had just gotten married and, and had a cousin visiting me in Boston, uh, where I was working as an analyst at an investment firm at the time. And uh, uh, my cousin Nadia was having trouble with, with uh, units. So I said, hey, when you go back to New Orleans, can I tutor you? So I started tutoring her when she went back on speakerphone and Yahoo Google and all the rest. And uh, it worked out. She, she got over her hurdles and I started tutoring her brothers. The whole time I had another day job. and. Uh, then I started tutoring a bunch of other cousins and family friends. It was free tutoring. Um, and, and, uh, Are you a compulsive tutor? I, I am. I guess, I guess you know, it was funny. You would call up people and you would say, hey, I know you haven't heard from me in a long time. And I tried to send you a Christmas gift, but can I tutor your kids? Which, which is this, uh, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, no, no, no. So that happened. I actually started writing a little software to quiz them first. But, but that was just, you know, to, to see what problems they were right, doing. Right, right. Sure, sure. Yeah. And then in, uh, 2006, I was actually just venting to a buddy, and I was saying, you know, I have all the software, it's really cool, and it's helping my cousins, but I'm getting a little frustrated with kind of the, the scaling aspect of it. Like, even with Twist well, True, the, the first feedback from my cousins was, was that they liked me better on YouTube than in person. <laughs> so, the very first tutoring sessions with Navia were like, okay, how do we figure out how to do this? Yeah, yeah. I, I got a speakerphone out, and we used Yahoo Doodle, and at okay. first we did it with our, our mice. Yeah. And it was very hard to write with that. And then I looked it up. I was like, oh, there are these pen tablet things. They're like 80 bucks. I got her one. I got me one. And then we were able to write properly. Um, so then when we did our first, when, when I was going to make my first YouTube video, I kind of looked around. I said, I have a video camera. My, my cousins aren't paying me for this. So I'm not going to buy one. Yeah, yeah. So I said, well, it worked with Nadia just seeing writing and, uh, and, and hearing voice. So why don't I just try that out uh, for So I, I used some free screen, the screen capture software. And I just started writing on a black background. And, and then I, I put it on YouTube. And I, and, and I still remember that first moment where it was like, I was even thinking about, oh, I don't want everyone to see this. It's yeah. kind of embarrassing and all the rest. And, and I was like, YouTube's like, you can either make it public or not. Right. And I was like, oh, I'll make it public. And then people started. There's, a very, there's a, clearly an idea about engagement in there. So you have these, making these in less than 10 minute videos. So how, many, how many videos exist today? 2,700. 2,700. OK. And, and how many videos, what, what was the, the year of the first video, the year and month of the first video? November 2006. Okay, you are a compulsive tutor, I just want you to know. <laughs> okay, where, you know, I started making a few videos, my cousins, you know, units and, and basic algebra and all the rest. And uh, I, I said, oh, but this isn't a business. This is, I'm doing this for fun, my cousins like it. You know, what's cool is, is that this could be used by my future children or their children, it's just like a neat thing. And then look, there's other people on the internet who are fighting about it. If the VC were here, they'd say, well, how are you going to monetize this? <laughs> So let's talk about, 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 about when, because you must have had that thought at some point. Yes, no. <laughs> so talk, so talk, talk about the, yes, mortgages and monetization, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, you know, the thought process, it actually came to a head in about 2007, where it became clear that there was some traction here. I did get approached by some successful entrepreneurs and, and a few VCs who say, hey, we think something's here. Why don't we, you know, see funded? You can do this for a living. And I already, I already got the fever that I wanted to do this, okay. but, you know, for, for a living. The first conversation was really good, double bottom line, you know. Money and do good at the same time, and all, all of that type of thing. The second conversation wasn't so much fun. They're like, "How about you continue to do this in algebra, and that that'll be lead generation for our pre our premium services, where we do SAT prep?" And I said, "No, that's lame. If we do something that's good for SAT prep, and it, this, the delivery cost is zero, to the, the mental simulation yes. in, in my mind was, well, let's let's imagine it to be a success." And I did think, first of all, that you're, we were going to get much more goodwill and people helping us if we were not for profit. Uh, but the other mental simulation is what, what did we want this to become? Because in the in the forefront problem around with a big success would have been an exit and you know I'd, I'd buy a nicer house and, and another Honda or something like that. <laughs> I, there is an opportunity here because the content is so timeless that there's it's not just videos anymore, there's software, all of this. There's an opportunity to become an institution. I think we're at an inflection point where um, yeah, you have your famous institutions in America, the Harvards, the Stanfords that exist and they're doing amazing things. Uh, but I, I think I think it's it's kind of shocking that there's not a new generation of institutions that are coming about because of all of this crazy stuff that we're in the middle of. That we're in this, as I think you mentioned, the Florence of yeah, our yeah, generation, yeah, 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 of, uh, yeah, yeah. or you know, the Jerusalem at the you know, yeah, yeah, Olivia, yeah, or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. So there should be new institutions. I got a a PayPal donation for for ten thousand dollars, and and and. and Wow, I'm solicited and you know, I was just checking my emails, like $10,000. No. Oh, that's very, that's very Hi, good. honey. Hey, honey. <laughs> Order steak tonight. That's very good. <laughs> and, and so I immediately emailed Ann Doerr, and the name had rung a bell, but maybe there are many doors, I don't know. And, and, and so I, I said, this is the largest donation we've ever gotten. Um, if we were a real school, you would have a building named after you. Um, <laughs> and, and, and Ann well, immediately, like, 20 minutes, she was, she's like, oh, we should have lunch. I was like, oh, well, great. So I, I went to lunch and I had these little like, place mats that were like my PowerPoint presentation. And, and then she's like, so, so how are you living right now? And 
I said, well, you know, I have some savings from my old job, but, you know, it's, I'm kind of updating my resume as we speak because it's... Uh, <laughs> LinkedIn, that's a separate story. Yeah, that was right. kind of a separate thing. And on, I remember literally on the drive back home, yeah, she was kind of thinking about it a little bit, and on the drive back home, I got a text. She's like, well, you have a salary now. And so she gave that first donation. To Talk a little bit about the guy that made that was standing behind you at Ted. Yes. Literally about two months after that, I was running this little summer program, summer camp, and I had all these kids playing Lego sumo wrestling. There was a battle royale going on. And I, uh, I got a text message from Anne. She was at the Aspen Ideas Festival, and, and, and she says, I'm in an audience, a room of 2,000 people, and Bill Gates is on stage talking about you right now. And, 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 and I was like, that, that prankster, Anne. <laughs> she's like, oh, wow. Like, Bill Gates, he said his kids use it, he uses it. I started like, what did I say in these videos? Like, is it, is this might be irresponsible. But, um, but I didn't know what to do with that. Like, I was just like, well, I guess he likes. Like, I didn't have any context. And then uh, two weeks later, I get a call from uh, uh, his chief of staff. I'm saying, oh, I don't know if you heard, but, but Bill is a fan, and, and he would like to meet if, if you have some time. And, and I go, okay, you look at your camera. I went my calendar, and it was, it, was, it was like completely empty. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Wednesday at 8.45. And so the Gates Foundation has now made a substantial in yes. the, uh, contribution yes. to the call game. What I want you to get a sense of this is, look, this is completely... This is a completely innocent activity. It is just putting yourself in service to the world and letting the world respond. Is that fair? So the third piece of this is the Los Alto School District. Now, when you say a city and then the word school district, innovation isn't necessarily the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> but talk about what they're doing. Not even a year ago, we got our first major funding from the Gates Foundation and from Google. And uh, we were just ramping team up our team. We, we had hired a, a president, a, a COO, and, and, and our first engineers to build out the exercise platform that lets every student work at their own pace and master concepts of the videos complement. And literally, within two weeks, a board member of Los Angeles, Mark Goins, uh, said, hey, you should meet the board and talk about some of your ideas. We met the board, and they said, well, what would you do with, if you had anything to do with the, with the fifth grade classroom? I said, like, well, they're just say something crazy. So I said, I'd, I'd have every kid work at their own pace, uh, the master concept before moving on, and the no, no lectures in classrooms anymore, and the role of the teacher, they will get as much data as we can give them, and only intervene when, when it's necessary, when students struggle, or even better, get, get peers to intervene uh, with each other. And really, in like two days, they, they said, you know, we start two weeks. And in this model, the, the homework and the classroom get reversed, right? That's step one. Well, okay, 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 you know, right, I, right. I said the flip halfway yeah, through yeah. a talk I once gave, and that, you know. Okay. So the flip is what people are doing with the videos by themselves, right? Like, give the lectures at home, pause, repeat, you can do problems at, 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 at school. Now we have all the, the, the software so that it can actually generate problems, have people work at their own pace, generate data for the, for the teachers, suggest the right videos to watch at the right times. And so now we're saying whether at home or school or traveling, work at your own pace doing the, the right thing. Right. And all of that data is surfaced to the teachers. And so when you go to the classroom, the teacher only intervenes when someone's stuck or gets their peer to intervene. And, it, and, and this is the important part. We, we just view it as a, as a means, a tool, to free up other class time. So now you can start doing the deep end. So this is not a substitute for all. This, is a, this takes a chunk of piece and, and, and does it extremely productively, but there's still there's still time for other kinds of engagement, other kinds of interaction, other kinds of Yeah, our, our mission is if someone has nothing else, we want to give them a good scaffold of, of, of a really rich learning. So if you're, if you're in the rural area, you'll get something. Uh, but the, the ideal is, is if you have that plus a really interactive, awesome teacher uh, that, they, that you have been missing in school. When you let everyone work at their own pace, you see over and over again, right when you start, there's a group of kids that just race ahead, the traditional probably people in this room, the AP students, whatever else. And there's a bunch of students who kind of struggle a little bit, they're not progressing as fast. And a traditional model, you do an assessment, you're like, okay, you guys are going to, you know, Ailing. Y'all are going to go to Stanford and all the rest, and you guys are going to do something else. But, but what we're seeing is some of a good number, you can't predict who they are. When you give them the chance to focus on their foundations, negative numbers, multiplying decimals, whatever it is, every week, every month, we see one of those kids, or several of those kids, just, they, they spend a lot of time on one of these core concepts, and then they just erase that. It's like escape, they just escape. Just escape. And, and, and over and over again, you see students who, who you thought were not meant to go to Stanford, and all of a sudden, well, maybe they are. And you know what? They thought they weren't meant to go to Stanford. It's amazing. Well, please thank Sal.